drones are branching out of the terrifying war machine market. Unmanned aerial vehicles are increasingly used for a number of different commercial applications. We're going to see just how easy it is to get a piece of this emerging trend. After a few hours of research on the internet, we've ordered the parts for a drone online. With a bit of assembly, we're ready to start flying. Let's say we were going to open a business delivering toasted sandwiches by air. To help us get our Sangers from A to B, we're off to get a bit of advice from commercial UAV operator Matt Tubb. Uh, controlling something unmanned or remotely uh, is a unique skill. It takes hundreds of hours of, of practice. Uh, five hours certainly isn't adequate. Um, go to a model flying club, go to a model flying store, uh, get yourself some, some toys and enjoy it. So it seems it's not as easy as just ordering a drone off the internet and then advertising your drone delivered toasted sandwich business. So I'm here on the Central Coast at a football match to see how the pros do it. Pilot Steve Keep works with Matt Tubb and is showing us the ropes. On top of learning to fly, you currently need a license if you want to operate commercially. As a commercial operator, you need to have uh, at least five hours experience on uh, an unmanned vehicle uh, that you intend to be operating. Uh, that, uh, that detail needs to be logged. Uh, ideally you'll have uh, manufacturer training and then you build an operations manual which you present to the Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, that along with a the fee they'll assess you and your competence and uh, assign a, a time to do a test. Uh, you'll undertake that test and should you succeed, then they'll uh, at some point issue you with a, a, a license. So currently, you have to complete the theory exam component of a private pilot's license, get an aircraft radio operator certificate, and complete a number of other checks. This may change in the future, as the air safety regulator has proposed drones under two kilograms will have far fewer requirements to operate commercially. However, you can fly as a hobbyist so long as you're not running a business and you stay out of restricted airspaces and away from people. So while our business idea is out of the question, I'm going to take this drone for a spin and see just how easy it is to fly with no experience whatsoever. So I've just got it hovering at the moment. It's actually surprisingly easy to use. I mean, I wouldn't be zooming it around houses or anything like that, but just going back and forth and hovering at a stable height is quite straightforward. Um, it is, however, important to remember that other things can go wrong besides pilot error. You can lose signal, you can have issues with the motors, and if you've got quite a heavy drone, that can be uh, a bit of a safety concern. Recently, there's been an incident of a drone allegedly falling out of the air and injuring a participant in a race, as well as one time when a drone crashed into the Harbour Bridge. Whatever the changes to licensing and privacy legislation might be, it's clear that this technology is already having a big impact, and this will only grow as drones become cheaper and more common.